Hi, my name is Stepan with Claire Online Video, and I'd like to welcome you to this tutorial on getting dynamic time lapses with DSLR cameras. Let me start out with pointing out some of the benefits in using your DSLR camera to capture vibrant time lapses. One of the most important factors, in my opinion, is the resolution that you're capable of getting with your good old DSLRs. Even with entry line models, you're able to capture images that far exceed your 1080 HD camera and even 4K models when capturing your images using the RAW mode. Working with these larger dimensions gives you room to crop, add motion and post production that mimic slider and jib movements, and allows you to deliver high quality exports that can be shown on large screens. Another benefit to using stills over video is that you can use high end tools such as Adobe Photoshop. Lightroom, Camera Raw, and After Effects to create a stylized and dynamic final product. Last but not least, the convenience of being able to travel lightweight and more compact is a big bonus. This is especially true when you're making a trip to remote locations. Those are just a few benefits to consider when shooting your next time lapse. Regardless, there are a few must have items that I think you should have in your toolkit when creating a time lapse. This is a list of things I had when I shot the time lapse in this tutorial. A solid tripod, an intervalometer which allowed me to set timing and intervals for my time lapse, fully charged batteries or external power. I also shot everything in manual mode so that I had control of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Finally, you want to make sure you have plenty of media and are using high capacity class 10 or higher memory cards. Post production wise, I used Adobe Bridge, Photoshop, and Camera Raw to edit my photos into this time lapse. One common question when starting with a time lapse is determining how long you need to shoot for. This will depend on the delivery format of your final video and the interval you use. In my case, I was looking to produce a 15 second video with a frame rate of 24 frames per second. To keep it really simple, I took 15 and multiplied it by 24, which told me that I needed to capture 360 total frames to create a 15 second output. I would suggest that you capture a few extra frames just in case there's an image you want to remove later on in post. Following my field shoot, I came back with my 360 something still photos and organized them into a folder on my drive. Next, I used Adobe Bridge to group my photos. Bridge ships with the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite and is a beautiful way to sample your photos and media. Once you navigate to your photos inside of Bridge, you can group your photos into a stack. The cool thing about this feature is that you can preview your time lapse by closing the stack and then using the slider bar to scan through your images. Let's reopen the stack and move forward with the next step in the process. Make sure that all of your photos are selected and then right click on the photo stack. Select the open images inside of Camera Raw option. Camera Raw is a program that ships with Adobe Photoshop and allows you to easily edit exposure, tonality, color, and a number of other things with the use of sliders. You have the option to adjust white balance, exposure, contrast, shadows, whites, blacks, vibrance, and more. You also have advanced options by selecting the other icons in this panel. Things like sharpening, noise reduction, converting the images to grayscale, etc. When you have the look you want, go ahead and make sure you have all of your photos selected and then right click. Choose the sync settings option. This will apply the exposure and other settings you've made to all of your images in the photo stack. Next, we'll navigate down to the information under the preview image and we'll select this area. This will open the workflow option window. Here we can make any adjustments to the output of our photos. I'm okay with all of the default options here, so I'll move forward with saving the images. On the bottom left, go ahead and select the Save Images button. In this window, we will choose the destination of our images and rename the photos if you'd like. I'm also going to choose a more manageable output for Photoshop. In this case, I'll go with a TIFF format. When we're finished, we'll choose the save option and Camera Raw will begin to batch save all of the photos and edits we've made. When the images are done saving, we'll move into Adobe Photoshop to assemble our time lapse. Open Photoshop and navigate to File in the toolbar. Select the new option. Here we'll enter a name for our project and choose a video preset. Now we can choose a size for our final output. If you recall what I mentioned earlier about resolution, my photos are much larger than 1080 HD. My camera actually produced a photo of 5089 by 2863 pixels. With that in mind, I'm going to create a custom document type. Next, we'll proceed with adding our photos to Photoshop. Navigate to Layer in the toolbar and select Video Layers and then New Video Layer from File. Select the first image in your photo stack. Photoshop has now imported your photos into a video file. Navigate to Window in the toolbar and select the Timeline option. This shows you the time lapse that we've created. 
There are a few other things we need to adjust before we can export our time lapse. Navigate over to the Timeline Panel button and select the Set Timeline Freight option. Here I'll enter the 23.976 frames per second that I wanted and then I'll press OK. Now we'll adjust the length of our time lapse by selecting the Play button in our video layer. Here I can adjust the speed of the video so that I get the duration I originally wanted, which was 15 seconds. This is why I recommend getting a few extra frames during shooting in the event that you're a little short or if you've had to remove photos from the sequence. Finally, we can now export the video. Navigate to File, Export, and then Render Video. This will open a new window which allows us to name our file and select the final destination. We can also choose a format for our video. In my case, I'd like to do further editing with this in other programs such as Premiere and After Effects. So I'll choose QuickTime with an uncompressed quality setting. Look over everything else and make sure it matches your settings. The rest looks good, so I'll select Render to export the video. This may take a while depending on the speed of your machine and the export settings you've chosen. I promise that the results are worth the wait. Using this method will produce some dynamic time lapses. You can take things even further by adding those jib or slider movements in Premiere or After Effects, since you have all of the extra resolution to play with. Check out the past tutorial I created called Creating a Moving Time Lapse Effect in Adobe After Effects to see this technique in action. Thank you for watching and check back for new tutorials here on Streaming Media Producer.